to make a little video of how to update your um, drivers and basically optimize everything you can for your GPE. All right, so first things first is to um, get the latest drivers for your GPE. You definitely want uh, NVIDIA drivers um, that are newer than 522 because that's when NVIDIA improve the latency of the drivers. So the first thing you need to do is download the, the MV clean stall from techpowerup.com. Um, once you've installed, downloaded and installed that, you should be able to open the executable. There it is, MV clean stall 1.16, I think is the latest one. So you double click that and then we're ready to go. So I have just updated my drivers, but what I'll do is I'll, I'll update them again over the top now, okay? So when you open this tool, it will basically search to see whether a new driver is out. Um, if it finds one, it will list it here and it will be different from your current driver, okay? So once it's found that, uh, make sure install best driver for my hardware is selected and click next. Uh, then it will give you a big list of things that are contained in that driver. Now, you don't need most of this stuff. Um, drip it down as much as possible and then it will have the lowest lead. So I would suggest you select all of those top three. That would be my suggestion. Click next. That will then download the relevant files. So if that's done, so then it takes you to an installation tweaks option. I've already set up these settings before, so I can use previous settings. But for the first time, you'll need to basically tick what I tick here. Um, so you want to tick the first three, uh, disable install of telemetry and advertising, don't need that. Run it um, unattended, yeah, that's fine. And perform a clean installation. So that will clean out um, the old driver. It will clean out the settings for the old driver. It'll clean out any um, temporary directories for the old driver. And it, so that, that's very useful for troubleshooting and have, making sure it's clean. Uh, leave the next three. Uh, MPO, I have tested MPO in Fortnite with it on and off. And um, on, it was a slightly better performance for me. Um, so I leave that one alone. Um, if you're getting uh, like lots of big black screens or you're getting um, F big FPS drops, you could try disabling this, but um, as I say, I've tested it and I, for me, it's better if I just leave it alone. Ansel, I believe, is a screen capture um, utility, so I disable that because I don't need that. Um, okay, so then we get into the expert tweaks. So you've got disabled driver telemetry. So if you've got a crash or something, it will send the report back to NVIDIA. Don't need that, thank you. That's more bloatware. Um, leave that one alone. Uh, sleep timer, as I, as I say, I, I disable sleep, but you can select that um, if you don't. Um, MSI mode, so message single signaled interrupt. So, this is an important one. If you're running a card, a GPU that's older than a 30 series, so a 3070, 3080, 3090, etc. Um, so if you're running a card like mine, which is a 20 series, a 2080 Ti, then you manually need to set MSI mode for your card after you do after you install the new driver for it. Uh, what that does is it's a more efficient way of your operating system communicating with devices. Um, so again, that will lower latency. Um, if you don't use the MV clean stall utility to install the driver, then typically you'd have to um, use a, a utility called MSI ut mode utility. And then you'd have to manually click this tick box where MSI mode, because it's supported, and then click apply and then reboot. And then it will um, put it into MSI mode. So I would have to manually do this step through MSI mode if I was not using the MV clean stall. Yeah. Um, the other thing this does is this skips another tuning step. Is it allows you to specify an interrupt processor that is away from CPU zero. So if we have a look at the just the general latency. We go into latency mon and we look at the general latency of the computer, right? And I run some, I run some stat gathering. We have a look at the, how much, how much load did the CPU cores are compared to each other. So you can see CPU zero by default is being used much more than the other ones, much more. Windows uses that by default for devices. Anything you can do to spread the load out through your other CPU cores and threads 
um, the better, because it lowers the general latency of your computer. So what I do is I move my GPU interrupts to core, the third core, so CPU two in this case, and I use my imp, I move my input devices, so my keyboard, mouse, controller, to uh, CPU four, so the fifth core. And what that does is it frees up CPU zero more and your whole system latency comes down because there's less of a bottleneck. The MV CleanStall um, driver installer utility lets you do that. You can specify which CPU you want, so I want the third one here, um, without having to go into another app and manually do that. There's a tool called Interrupt Affinity Policy Tool. Doing it through the driver install lets you skip that other tool that lets you skip the MSI tool and it lets you skip the interrupt processor affinity tool and you can do it straight during the setup of the driver. So it's really useful this for doing that. And then in the last ones you want, uh, uh, make it compatible with easy anti-cheat, which is what Fortnite uses and just accept, automatically accept the driver and inside warning, which you normally get a pop-up, which you manually have to click. This just skips that for you. So once you've got all these ticked and enabled, um, you can click next and then it will give you the option of either installing then and there or it will you can build a package which you can then install later as you can see you can install it right now or you can build a package and then run that exe file that it creates later so um, i normally do the latter so i normally create the package so that if i want to go back to a previous one it's really easy to do i just double click one of these now you can yeah, double click that and it will start to set up the driver. During that, it will uh, delete the old driver so you'll lose the screen for a couple of seconds and then it will install the new driver, but the new driver will basically have reset all your configuration. So after you've uh, run that setup file and installed the new driver, you'll need to go into the NVIDIA control panel. All right, so to set this up to be optimum for gaming, First thing you need to do is do the adjust settings with preview thing. Um, this is like a preset. So you can basically drag the slider to the left for performance and then click on use my preferred emphasis performance and click apply. And what that will do is in this tab here, it will set most of the things to low or off and optimize it. So we still want to optimize it a little bit more. So then after we've applied the performance, we then go to the one above the advanced CV image and we apply that. So now it's gonna use custom ones and we can basically customize it from that. So it's set pretty much most of these to off or, or maximum performance basically already for us. First, scroll down to low latency mode. So we'll talk about this a little bit. We don't wanna change this, we wanna leave it on off. And the reason we wanna leave it on off is because um, back as I say in driver 522, Nvidia came out with something called reflex latency. Um, and that supersedes this low latency mode in the um, control panel. So by setting this to off, if your game runs reflex, which Fortnite does, you can set reflex to on plus boost, that overrides this. So just, just set this one to off. Your monitor te technology. So the two ones here typically to think about are either G-Sync or Fix Refresh. I'd recommend G-Sync if you're only one, running one, one monitor um, and your monitor contains a G-Sync dedicated chip in it. Not something that's G-Sync compatible, an actual G-Sync chip in it. So if you're doing that and only running one monitor, then choose G-Sync. That will give you the best experience. But if you're running more than one monitor, including a capture card, which counts as a second monitor, then select Fix Refresh here. Yeah. Okay, if you select G-Sync and have more than one monitor running, what you'll have, what will happen is you'll get latency spikes every 10 seconds or so, which you don't want. You just don't want. So fix refreshed if you're running more than one monitor. Yeah, that's the rule. After that, what else are we setting? We make sure that that's set to your GPU. Uh, we prefer maximum performance in power management mode. Shader cache I set to unlimited high performance for quality and turn off uh, V-Sync. So basically just copy my settings here. I'll scroll back up and I'll scroll back down just to make sure that you can see what I've got. So once that was all done, you click apply. I haven't changed anything here, so I don't need to. It would apply otherwise. 
and then you go to the next tab. So in the configure surround, um, you want to select your GPU in the physics se settings there and then click apply. Change resolution. Next one. So you want to have your native resolution running for your main screen. That's the important one, whatever's native. And you want to use the NVIDIA color settings as well. So you just want to change it from use default to the NVIDIA ones. Uh, that's my capture card there. So that should be pretty much the same. Um, color settings the same, rotate display, none of this needs to change. Okay, so the next one is adjust desktop size and position. You want to make sure no scaling is set and perform scaling on the display. If you start performing scaling for stretch regs and reses and things on your GPU, that will add load and then you'll get performance problems. So you want no scaling, display, and then override. And you want to make sure that your second monitors are doing the same thing, basically. No scaling, display, override. Uh, G-Sync we've covered. We're not using that. We're using fixed refresh because I've got two monitor outputs, one, two. And I have them cloned. Uh, so whatever I see on my main monitor is then cloned to my capture card. Uh, the next thing you want is to set the video color, um, make sure that's on the NVIDIA and then advanced and then make sure that's full and then video, video image settings use NVIDIA, NVIDIA and you can leave those two alone. I don't think you'll be in the super resolution. All right, and that's it. So um, apply all that, uh, close that, that's done. Um, so we've, because we've installed it via the MSI mode, the um, MV Clean install driver thing. We've got the MSI mode done. We've done the processor infinity section. Uh, that's done. There's more details in my guide if anybody, if anyone wants to go into more detail on this. Um, so we've done the control panel. I do another step called IRQ priority whereby I set the IRQ priority of uh, maximum for my GPU and the second one for my input devices, which again is in my um, in my tuning guide how to do that. Um, basically, if you go MSI info, look at the IRQs and find your um, find your network card. There it is, and then look up that IRQ. You basically get take that number. And then you go into the registry and create a registry entry for that number with a priority of, of one. And then this one with a priority of two. So that basically puts them to the top of the list for inter any interrupt requests. Uh, you basically set, set these values in the registry under, the, under there and then you give it a priority one and two for those devices. Again, that's all in my guide. So if you want to get this exact path, copy and paste, or you want these exact values, then just jump on my Discord, download my guide, and go through it there, okay? Another thing you can do for your GPU is make it a lot cooler. And you can make it a lot cooler by downloading an app called MSI Afterburner. You do not have to overclock. You can leave these at zeros, which is what MSI Afterburner is typically known for. Um, but what you can do is you can set a custom fan curve, which can really, really help cooling. So it can keep, keep this cooling number down. So I enable a user-defined fan curve, and I set it so that once it gets to 60 degrees centigrade, I'm using 100% fan. So it rarely gets above 50, my one, so I'm only ever using about 70, 80%, and you can't hear it. The only downside here is noise. And if, if I mean, I, I, can't, I can barely hear it at, at full, full wax. So um, it's very important to keep this temperature as low as possible. Copy that. Okay there, and then apply it at startup with that little icon there. And then just make sure that you're running Afterburner with Windows. I've got a section on display, making sure your display, your actual physical monitors set up with um, response times as fast as possible. So I've got mine set to extreme. <coughs> Even though I'm not using G-Sync uh, mode, I'm using Fix Refresh, this is actually set up optimum for um, response time. So I, I use that. For my Alienware 360 hertz monitor. So disabling dynamic power states. I found this relatively recently and it is brilliant. So for a gaming PC, you want to disable power saving states. So it's always been very easy to do for CPUs. You do that in your BIOS and just find something called C states and disable it and then reboot.
That's always been easy, but I've recently found a way of doing that for your GPU as well. But you need to do, you can't do that one through the BIOS, you have to do that one through one registry entry. What you need to do is you basically need to add a key called disable P states in your, in your registry and then set it to one. But the tricky bit is the location of the directory that you need to put it into the registry because each GPU has a unique address, a GUID address um, that you need to find out first as part of the path uh, in order to um, find out exactly where to put this new key. Yeah. In order to do that, you need to go into right click your um, Windows button, find device manager, open up display of ad adapters, find your GPU, select that, right click, properties, details tab, and then from the drop down list, you find something called class GUID. And there it is, there's, there's the class GUID, that's your GPU. So if you right click that, press copy and then close all that back off again. It's then in your clipboard and you can basically go to then paste that into that directory path and then find um, quadruple zero after that and then create the key. Probably the easiest way of doing that is just to basically create a registry file, a template file, and just paste it over the top of the file and then run the registry file. So in my install pack, my tuning pack, um, I basically created a template for everybody that um, all you have to do is open it, uh, change, make sure that this bit is either right or updated to your GUID, save the file and then just double click it. And then you just double click this file and then it will add that, uh, that to the registry. And then all you need to do is reboot. And what that does is, it, as I say, it will stop your um, GPU going into power saving states. And in here, it will run it at a much higher frequency. The only downside is you'll be using up a bit more power. And as a result, you'll be generating a bit more heat. But as long as you've got the custom fan curves going, it really doesn't make much difference. That will help your hit reg. That will reduce latency. Um, so definitely recommend doing that one. Okay. And I think that might be it, to be honest with you. Um, and then you can test either in game. Um, I mean, testing wise, I use uh, for FPS, I use a, a free app called CapFrame X to test FPS. Um, and you can, I run, I basically run different tests and then you can see what the latency is, what the FPS is doing and compare, um, compare before and after settings to see whether it's better or worse. You can see uh, how much stuttering you're getting. Um, so that's this is a really good free tool for working out um, whether a, a tweak is good or bad or just doesn't do anything. Um, so I use that for, for measuring um, FPS. If I want to measure actual latency, built into my monitor is a NVIDIA Reflex Latency Analyzer chip that allows me to plug my mouse straight into the monitor and then the monitor goes into the PC. And then what it does is it measures end to end from when you click the mouse to when you see the thing on display. So you shoot a sh shotgun or something and when you see it on display. So I can also benchmark latency along with the FPS. Um, so that's what I use. So I've tested pretty much all of these settings to see whether they're better, how much better, etc. So um, it's not just based on feel. All right, so I think that's it for your GPU tuning. Um, if you've got any questions, uh, shoot me a message on Discord. Um, if you do exclamation mark Discord in any of my stream chats, then I can, um, I can help you set this stuff up. So just let me know, really.